My name's Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint where we grow cool plants and today we're going to be doing a follow-up to our video we published 60 days ago on what was called OMG Why Cut the Giving Fig Tree. And behind me you might already see some growth that's happening and again this was pruned on August 5th and typically you don't prune your fig trees as severely as we did and especially at that time of year but I had a goal and an objective in mind and in fact it's happening and as I shared in that video and I'll put the link down below the goal was to create a tree with multiple branches at a lower level so that we can graft those branches and create a salad of figs the goal being we're gonna have figs with black and purple and green and all the variations in between and I'm reaching out to you the viewer to make some suggestions in the comments down below in regards to what you would recommend that I search for between now and late winter for when I go to graft this fig tree that I've got here behind me. I want to share with you what's going on. I'm going to select some branches that I want um, all of the resources of the plant to go into in preparation for grafting them, as I said, in late winter to early spring. And again, I want you, the viewer, to suggest to me what figs are your favorite varieties you'd like for me to actually add to this fig tree behind me. The goal being in mind is to add anywhere from three to five different flavors of figs. And unlike the original tree that was 15 to 25 feet tall, the goal is to keep it within a 10 foot um, range so that we can hopefully reach and enjoy as many figs as possible. Let's take a look at what we accomplished. But before we do so, I want you to see what it was before. So I'm going to do a quick um, 10, 20 second um, clip of what we did just 60 days ago. Behind me I've got a fig that we've installed from a cutting about three years ago. Take a look again at the height one more time. Go up there and take a look at how high those branches are because in the future between now and next year I'm hoping to share with you a fig that's going to have two, three, possibly four different varieties of fig all growing under 10 feet. It's going to grow in a compact structure that actually provide us still hundreds of fruit and I'm hoping to accomplish all this by next year and we're just gonna go about a quarter inch above that node and we're gonna cut like so we're being careful here that'll be the next growing spot right there so here's the node that goes all the way around and then this here was once upon a time a leaf. And this here will be where the new branch is gonna come out. So I'm gonna make sure that I get a growth that comes out of this point, and then another one, and another growing point over here. So these are gonna be like my two branches that'll be growing in this area. So I'm already anticipating that in advance. So I want this plus that, and we're gonna cut right here. So this is actually not gonna be part of um, the growth we're expecting. And so if you take a look again at the center of this tree as well, and again, this is unique to fig trees, the center has got this milky white sap that's very soft and a very easy entryway for insects as well as bacteria and viruses to get into the heart of the woods. So what we're gonna do here today, and we talked about this zone over here, which was the original tree about two years ago with that hole that's still in there, which was originally that white spot. And what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of this Ivory Organics paint, which is an organic paint with those oils, and we're gonna seal that. Let's see, it's opening, so we're gonna try to force some paint down in there. And get a little bit more. And that's done. And then we're gonna do the same for these zones as well. And we're just gonna paint these tops up. So we just finished pruning the fig tree here in our backyard and <clears throat> you can see this is a very quite dramatic pruning um, and I'm sure a lot of you viewers think that's it, you've killed the tree and um, again I'm hoping you subscribe down below so you can actually see how beautiful this tree is going to um, turn out and the benefits of it is you can actually have some lower um, multi-trunk branches so that it will actually support figs at a lower um, area than if you actually had what we had before a tree that was 15 20 feet tall and figs are out of reach and the birds and the wildlife were taking advantage um, But after we actually I thought I was wrapped up. I noticed 
and the sun got a little bit higher in the sky and now the tree is in the sun and this is actually um, a really big deal. A lot of pruners and a lot of landscapers come out, prune the plants, and all of a sudden there's too much light now in the, on the tree trunks and branches. And this is another um, place that Ivy Organics comes in and actually offers its protection. Um, the goal is actually to keep the tree trunk cool. Right now, this branch was actually in full shade for the last six months, and all of a sudden, here we are now in the, you know, at the beginning of August, and we've got some really hot summer days coming between now and September. And we need to offer protection, just as we would for our skin. If we went from being indoors our entire lives, and um, or at least let's say six months, as this was in the shade for the last six months, and all of a sudden you're out in the sun, you know, 12, 14 hours a day, every single day, your bark's gonna crack, just as your skin would crack, and it's gonna cause first, second, third degree burns. And I'll put a video link down below of what can actually happen, um, as we saw a neighbor's citrus tree that was actually um, affected with third degree burns. What we're gonna do here today is actually take the Ivory Organics paint. I like using the color white because it offers the most sunblock protection, but the brown and the green offer a more natural um, look. And we're just gonna now coat the tree like so. So here we are now, 60 days after we've severely pruned this fake tree. It's now October 5th and we've now accomplished several feet of new growth and almost a dozen new branches have been created. The biology and the science behind this is the auxins that are generally formed at the plant tips um, are now being generated and created, but when we initially pruned it, it was a cytokinins down in the root and there was an overload of cytokinins which actually stimulate root shoot and development and growth. So um, now we're accomplishing a balance between the auxins that are in the leaves and the cytokinins below to create what we've now generated as being a bushy, low growing fig variety. But all of these branches we're now gonna select from to become our root stock for the variety and the flavor of figs that we're gonna wanna graft on top of it. One tip being, we don't know exactly what this green variety of fig was. It was a gift um, that was given to me decades ago and I'm using this now as a rootstock but when it comes to grafting trees whether it's figs or any other variety of um, plants the goal is to find plants that are within the same genus but ideally not the same species as when it comes to grafting plants they typically grab on and heal better if they're actually different species and not identical so again just to reiterate the point this being a green fig variety if I put another green variety on it it is less likely to hold and take and, and establish than if I went with a black or a purple or a brown variety of figs. So by grafting different plants within the same genus will result in better results. So keep that in mind when you make your recommendations in regards to what type of figs I should be grafting onto this. Let's take a look down below and the goal is now to prune any excess branches so again the resources are going in the right direction so what I found over here is if we take a look near the bottom you'll notice that there's some suckers that are now happening a little bit too low and these will definitely not be grafted so I'm just gonna prune this out over here so we're just gonna take that out this here is gonna be growing in the wrong direction as I want these two branches to really be the two branches that are gonna support the two varieties of figs I'm gonna leave this third one here for insurance so we'll have three chances but the goal is to have two varieties on one branch and then two varieties on the other um, stock which you'll see as soon as I clear this and open it up and you can see when I'm pruning if you can come in a little closer this branch which was in this place I've pruned it as close as I can to the tree trunk with the intention that as the tree trunk expands, this wound will actually go within the tree and basically be enclosed so it can heal the most healthy way possible. If I've left it as a stump and this is left to rot, this could potentially be an entryway for wood boring insects such as termites and beetles to work their way into the dead wood and then into the heart of the tree and into the wood. I'm gonna show you a couple other examples as there's a large prune behind here. This is the smaller branch as well. It's not an ideal branch for grafting, so I'm also gonna remove this branch and again, cutting as close as I can to the tree trunk and off that comes. And now we've got one, two, three branches on this side and another one, two branches on this side 
for a total of up to five branches that we're gonna get to graft this late winter and early spring. What I'm gonna do next now is coat all of those prunes. And again, we just saw the pith on that side as it's hollowing and we can actually clean up and put another coat of paint on that end just to keep that wound sealed as we get through the winter so that in the spring as the plant continues to grow, those wounds will ultimately close and heal. What we're gonna to use to accomplish this is a product called Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. And let me read this to you here. It says, it's a 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint where you just add water. It's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier, protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodent, rodents for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. And it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. And it basically says it's ideal for new plantings and transplants, save injured and damaged trees pruned and exposed surfaces. And what we're gonna do now, and I've mixed the batch earlier, is we're just going to mix its contents. It basically comes as an organic white paint powder, and it's also available in either white, brown, or green. But it's an organic white paint with natural oils, organic oils. So we're gonna make sure that's all, that's all stirred together. And then we're just gonna brush this on over here. So take a look over here. I'm just gonna seal these wounds that we just made. And the other one back here. Another one over there. And then the other one on this side. What I wanna share with you, if you can come around, you'll notice on the back side, there's a prune that I did about a year and a half ago. And let me share with you what's happened over here. So if you take a look over here, you can see that the cambium tissues have expanded and are in the process of closing this wound when it was closed. This plant was about 10 feet tall when we pruned it and it generated these two branches that are now over here. But as you can see, again, the fig's pith, the center of the wood is actually very soft and is usually an excellent entryway for ants, beetles, termites, um, and a lot of pathogens to work their way into it. So what we're gonna do again, is we're gonna take the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint and just fill that in and seal it all the way around. And that'll actually keep it coated and healthy until we get into next spring and summer when the plant will continue to grow and ultimately this will close up. So we'll just coat that up. And then there's another wound over here from a branch that we just pruned and we'll seal that. And then again, by spring, and early summer, that will actually close as the bark continues to expand and grow into next year's growth. So I'm happy to share with all of you that even though we pruned it in late summer, and I know a lot of you said, this is gonna result in disastrous effects, I knew what I was doing and I would not recommend this with most, if not any other type of fruit tree, but I had a goal in mind and we're in the process of actually achieving it. Again, I'm looking forward to your comments in regards to what type of fig varieties you recommend. Please write those down in the comments. I'm gonna be searching for those, and if you have any cuttings you'd like to mail to me, I'll put my address as well down in the comments below, and I'll be hopefully introducing you and your fig varieties that you'd want me to put onto this fig, and we can watch how that gets accomplished in the late winter, early spring. So if you found this video informative, be sure to like it and most importantly subscribe down below so you'll be connected to all the other educational Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint videos that we put out on average once a week to once a month. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.